Hello fellow gardeners, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. Fellow gardeners, today I'd like to introduce you to the canna lily. I've used canna lily everywhere in my garden and also as we did the driveway and my happy place, I've always introduced them. Canna lilies have so many different colors and their leaves are amazing because you can get dark maroon leaves, you can get variegated maroon leaves and you can get even green ones. So today I'm going to introduce you to canna lilies. I'm going to show you how to propagate and multiply it. It's a very, very simple task and I'd like you to walk with me through this journey. In the canna family, there's over 30 species. And the beautiful thing about cannas is their colors. You get a pink, you get a red, you get even a yellow. And some of them you could get a yellow and red, a sort of multicolored one. But basically, so many different colors. Now the thing is, is that also their leaves are beautiful. So you get a green leaf, you get a maroon leaf, and you get a, a variegated yellow leaf, or a variegated maroon leaf. And all these just add to the beauty of the canna lily. Canna lilies are basically very easy to handle. All you do is have enough sun, at least six hours of sun, and have enough moisture and they grow up to about four feet, up to six feet. And so they're really great if you have them along the borders of your house, uh, along the wall, or at the end of your gardens because of the height. You don't want to put them in this front and suddenly you get these amazing <laughs> six foot cannas. So it's always nice when you're doing a gar your own gardening is to have them slightly at the back. It's really lovely when you batch the colors together, then it adds a little more drama. What I'd like to do is actually show you the different types of varieties that we have here is the leaves this is what I'd like to talk about because they're so stunning and you know okay we're looking at this one now this leaf of course the lovely oval leaf of the canna it also kind of reminds you of a banana plant but uh, this is actually more of a traditional one and it flowers red you get a lovely cluster of red. Now on the same note is that we have a yellow one. Now this yellow one, do you see the beautiful leaves? I mean, that is like God's painting, everything's so symmetrical. And this is so beautiful. And this flower's um, yellow. And on the same note, you do get maroon. I think I mentioned it earlier. And the maroon ones are really beautiful. Do you see that? And again, the big oval leaves. And uh, this one flowers orange, beautiful. And now what I'm really intrigued is, because I have never seen this variety, but look at those beautiful leaves. Again, so symmetrical. And this is a mixture of maroon and green. And I'm really curious to see what kind of co what color flower I will get with this one. So this is basically all cannas and they're just interesting. And so even in a situation where you're doing your own landscape and you want to just show something different, why don't you get the striped one or the, the yellow striped one? And that will make such a dramatic statement in your garden. Today I'd like to show you how to propagate uh, canna lilies and it's actually a very simple process. Once you understand the canna lilies, everything is happening in its root. Now the reason I say that, like we have a look at this canna lily, is their rhizomes. And so basically when you do plant a canna lily is you get these eyes and they look like this there's another eye. Now that's where the babies are going to come from. So you have two ways of doing it. I could just simply take my scissors and I'm going to snip it. Because I have an eye here on that one, I have an eye here and, um, and I have uh, 
an eye that is about to take off here. Now, so therefore, out of one plant, I've actually made three. And we can do another one. Is Here is another canna. All I need to do is I'm going to snip it. So already I have five canners. Now you see these little eyes where the babies come from, they do get quite big as seen here. And that's where the next shoot, the next canner will develop. And as you see here, it's already <laughs> taking place. Now, because canners are Basically, they like to live in clusters. As you see with that one, is already there's one, two, three, four, three canners already in that stock. But because I've separated it, I will soon be able to multiply that. So that's what I'm doing now, is actually getting my canners, there's an eye, is, uh, and that's the way I'm going to plant these. Again, if we take the maroon one, is some people just um, cut it. And even if, even if you don't have the stem or whatever, I would still plant this one and you will get eyes that will develop into the canna plant. I'm just gonna cut this a little bit just to get rid of some of those long read. So out of this one, I have an eye here. There's another eye. Is, oh, there's another eye. So I can actually get about four or five. So in order to make more, I'm going to cut it again. So I have one, two, and here, three, four, five plants there. And again, I do a similar thing with this lovely variegated yellow, is I'm going to look for the eye. Here they are. There's one eye there, there's one eye there, there's one eye here. I'm going to simply cut them up and you will see that they will multiply. There we go. So here we have enough canners to keep me going for a while. And as they start multiplying, I will actually pick them out from the soil, divide them again and scatter some more canners in my garden and keep repeating that. So we basically looked at the canna lily and it's amazing, it's an amazing plant. So it'll be very, very interesting once we do plant these canna lilies to see what sort of colors we're getting. It'll be such a surprise. Now, the thing about canna lilies is because as I mentioned before, they like, you know, once they start multiplying within themselves, you will get many, many shoots. But what happens is that sometimes with that moisture, it collects water inside and, if it doesn't dry out, and um, if it doesn't dry out, what happens is that you get certain diseases like fungus, or you may get slugs, which we have a leaf here, we'll show you. And also the thing that actually kills a canna lily is rust. Rust is a fungus and it basically seeps into the leaves and it always comes from the underside. This is a really good example. And what happens is that it seeps through and it basically kills the plant. And you'll notice is that the leaves go brown, yellowish brown, then they dry out and you get all these funny bubbles on it. And in the end, the bubbles pop and you get little holes in it. So that is rust. So what you do with rust is just get a fungicide because it can actually disseminate your whole plant. Now the other thing you get is here is the mealy bug. And I think once you see the close-ups, you'll see they hide at the back of the leaf. So even if you're looking at the leaf like this, you don't really see them. But when you turn them over, there's a cluster of all these mealy bugs and you could try with the mealy bug is an organic 
um, insecticide. Well, just basically made it at home and I will give you the recipe. It's just garlic, onion, chili, oil, and a bit of soap inside. I'll give you the recipe for that and that should actually sort out these mealy bugs. The other thing is that I think you've seen is, that, oh, baby slug, it's slugs, especially during the rainy season. So with slugs is that um, you could try to capture them, as they say, put a bit of uh, beer on, on ground level. They usually go there because they like the yeast and they drown. I actually deal with slugs with coffee because I saw it on the internet because they don't like the smell of coffee. But then at the same time, you can get something organic that can actually get rid of the slugs because during the rainy season, you get a lot of slugs and they eat into the leaves. In one of my previous shows, I talked about my happy place, and this is where I'd like to keep my canners, because earlier on, I had planted some canners as a way to shield the water pump. So in a way, is that I would like to add some more canners and also get a surprise, because it is my happy place. So just follow me. So these canners that are here, we planted them three weeks ago in this happy place and they're already coming up, if you see. They're all coming up beautifully. So I'm going to add these two varieties in this place because my water pump is there and the whole idea of having the canners there was actually to hide the water pump. So um, let me tell you something about canners. Usually, is um, we have the eye in a situation where you don't have the leaves and you've cut the uh, the stem what you need to do is when you're placing the, uh, the, the, the root or the stem in the soil let's assume you don't have the leaves is always make sure that the stem is pointing upwards because that's where the baby is going to come from in another situation is that you could lie it flat if you had no leaves because somehow the eye will eventually poke out into the soil and have your canna. In my previous episode, as I mentioned, my happy place, if you remember, I had a gaping hole of which we filled in. We put a lot of compost, a lot of manure, and look how well these plants are doing. Now, the basically is that um, Kenya has red soil, and that's why I call myself the red soil gardener. But the red soil in Kenya is, is a laterite and is full of iron. Generally, it's, it's quite workable and it's soft and it, um, it's very porous. So I'm going to stick this one and I'll show you. As I mentioned, is that the eye, I'm going to stick it upwards. If you did cut the leaf, make sure that the eye faces outwards. But even if you lie it flat, the eye will soon make its way up the soil. So I think because I want to see this one, I'm actually going to put it a bit further at the back. The hole I've made here is about six inches and that should be enough for a canner. And so um, let me get on with it. Just cover it nicely. Here we go. My beautiful, my beautiful artistic canner. I really want to see what sort of flower, what color flower it's going to have. And again, this is the traditional one as we mentioned. Again, the eye is here, but these are babies that came from the eye and that's how it works. So already here, I have two canners starting and another eye here. So I'm just gonna plonk it in the soil again, in here. Just get it all nice and six inches down, plonk it in, cover it nicely, 
press it down to make sure it's secure. And follow me in my next episode and let's see how this is going to show up. Thank you so much for being with me through this show. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and press that notification button so anytime we have any future episode, you will always be notified. Thank you so much and happy gardening.